Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another beautiful Call of Duty Collegiate matchup. As we see St. Clair, St. Clair College going up against Fisher Black, and uh, a little bit of a you know some some hesitancy in the booth today as we got the maps a little early, and it is a back to back to back invasion spread. And should it go to a game four and five, we'll have back-to-back -back reels. So, you know, diversity and variety are the spices of life. So I plead with any COD players out there to, you know, sprinkle in some some different changes in the map pool <laughs> for, for, for us casters in the booth. And I want to say I speak for a majority of the casters, or at least some of them, that... Triple invasion is just a daunting task, to say the least. Granted, we at least get differing game modes, so it should be a fun matchup either way as we get ready to start things off with Hardpoint. A bit of an interesting statistic I got from uh, our production booth as well is that Fisher Black actually got some games removed from their overall standings for having someone who was on two rosters play on the team, which was against the rules. Um, either way, St. St. Clair is currently at the top, sitting at an 8-1 with an 89% win rate. However, both of these teams are currently 1-0 in the playoffs, so big, big in implications for this matchup, ladies and gentlemen. It should be an exciting one, to say the least. I'm, I'm just excited to, to see these teams go at it. It should be uh, an exciting matchup. Invasion Hardpoint is often... It's a bit difficult, especially with the recent point changes. I know, um, I believe it is the P4 out in the open in the middle courtyard that has proven to right, be right, a right. Uh, a difficult, difficult point to hold. Just minimal cover. We see players utilize the motorcycle free combination to sort of get any amount of cover, but you got to have that spawn side as we load in, ladies and gentlemen. This is a best of five and... I'm going to remind you, we have Invasion, 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 Rio Rio. So, again, apologies for the lack of variety in the map pool. Uh, production and I were talking, saying casters should get a veto as well, but I don't think that day will come anytime soon. But who knows? Who knows what's in store? Either way, St. Clair and Fisher going at it here to get things started off as Factions takes down Rhett. And a nice little two-piece to get things started. Factions rotating in now through Hotel. Sophie hanging out on the outside as Lucasi and company try to slide in. They grab a point, but St. Clair is off to an early lead. As everything gets in the way. Should prove to be an interesting evening of Call of Duty. Brett CW holding, but not for long. Zarin with a two-piece as Sophie rotates from the Hotel cannot... Get the back-to-back -back. two pieces are and hold them now, waiting for the push-ups. As this P1, mainly just to get a gauge of the two teams. Nothing, nothing major just yet. Only a 14 to 7. And it could be 14 to 14 differential. Lucasi with a nice nade on the tank, as it will be all tied up after the P1. No one gaining any significant advantages thus far. GMG had good positioning, but this rotation from Fisher was just too clean. Factions trying to hold. Slides up and gets taken down. Seeing headshots up plenty here on Invasion. Lucasi with a big two-piece, but is unable to secure position. Not yet. Rotates up and gets taken out. Should have rotated to the back concrete towards the back rebar, but just rotated out in the opens. Aren't able to pick up the quick kill. Again, this P2, and especially that P4, wide open. Very difficult to, you know really turn into a money mill and gain any kind of momentum. It's the P3 you got to worry about. That bus station stop over on the highway side of the map that is a big money hill. Fisher College is able to keep it somewhat close as both teams grab about seven points each. And St. Clair cleans up the scrap. Fisher has the advantage on this P3. And this is where we're going to see the separation of these two squads and really set themselves apart. Scott here trying to stay up. Zarn shoots from down below, but Fisher College set up exceptionally well on the P3. As we see number six, Soapy there rotating. In. Gets caught out by factions. Rare going down to Scott. Once again, Fisher College 
able to take the lead as GMG tries to rotate up, but there's a quick three piece for Fisher. Rhett with a two, dismay on a three streak as the St. Clair College is finding themselves playing catch up for the first time in the, this hard point. Again, that P3, much more easy to defend than the P1 and P2. Scott able to get some hit markers. Factions going down to Kasi, though, as Zarn tries to rotate in with the rest of their squad. They're playing for scraps, though, as we rotate to that P4. Again, we're going back to a very open point. Shouldn't expect to see too much of uh, a hold on this one as that P3 put Fisher College in the lead by about 20. St. Clair keeping this one surprisingly close. Fisher College, though, has the advantage, it seems, at least for the time being, as these players are just playing on the edges of the point and not really, you know, challenging for position on this P4. Again, it's just incredibly difficult to hold. It's basically a wide open field with Palace looking over. And you just go on in and try to get on point. It is incredibly difficult to hold this P4 as a player both on either side has not touched the p4 at all i mean i understand not going for it but at least get a few seconds it can make all the difference in the world fisher college though playing for positioning on the p5 again no one touching the p4 i think zarin might go in but they're just playing on the edge they finally get on point and it's got to be the longest delay between a hold i've ever seen as St. Clair gets, I think, maybe three points total out of a P4. Fisher College didn't even attempt to go on the point. No one was even, you know, contesting that no man's land. I understand not wanting to go down, but you get a couple of points on the board. You give yourself a little bit of breathing room or claw yourself a little closer towards taking the lead as Fisher College begins to run away with it. Dopey, Lukasi, Dismay, and Lukasi again just got the team wipe. St. Clair has a spawn, but Fisher College is able to take advantage of their lead from P3 and continue to build on it with this P5 hold. As St. Clair just seems to be in disarray. Absolute disarray. Dopey on the four streak as there is a two streak or higher for all of the Fisher College squad. Dopey finally going down, but an absolutely dominant run. On this P5, GMG gets the two-piece, but it's too little too late with just three seconds left on the hill. So 120-50 differential. And it's not looking good for St. Clair as they rotate back to the P1. Rare and company put together a couple of kills and are able to lock in on the P1. And they can hold for, you know, I'd say at least half of this there. They're sitting, they're sitting pretty. Brett and Lukasi, though, not making things easy on them. As they get cleared off of P1 already, Fisher College right back in it. A full point differential as these teams, again, not pushing in for the point. It seems they're trying to. Fisher College has control, but they're not getting bodies on the hill. GMG is able to sneak in there as Rhett contests. We got Kasi rotating in from behind. You get back on point, but these teams are leaving a lot of hill time out on the open, leaving a lot left on the table. Go back for seconds. Go back for third, St. Clair. You need every bit of points you can get. They lock in on the P2, but we saw Fisher College rotate almost too easily on the P2. We'll see if they can do it here. GMG with a beautiful double headshot, but again, it's not enough. This Fisher College squad continues to run through them. Factions holding now just on the outside of Rebar. Had a beautiful position, but peaked out a little too aggressively, and now it's wide open for Fisher College to take. GMG is holding on the outside here. Soapy with a beautiful headshot as they rotate in. Soapy trying to just get on hill. Got to play that rebar, though. You're going out in the open. Rare has a chance to get a big rotation on that flank, but sadly only getting one as Fisher College is able to break hill. I think St. Clair's got to just play for P3 as you see Scott already rotating as it's just lining them up and knocking them down. Fisher College just taking it to St. Clair right now. As they've already rotated to P3, St. Clair was barely able to get to P3, let alone get, get any time on it. They were able to pick up a few seconds of scrap last time around, but Fisher College firmly in control of this matchup as they lock in the P3 rotation factions. Trying to rotate through gas station is Scott. 
tries to pick up the rotation and does, but leaves the point exposed for Rare to get in. We'll see if Lukasi can defend. Does not look like it. Rare able to get in there at least momentarily. Sliding in and taking over. Lukasi saved it for Fisher College. As Aaron gets caught out in the open. Once again, Fisher College showing their excellent rotations and hill breaking skills right there. Not giving up on the point. I'd like to see Scott rotate in. Or just one of the players get in. 20 seconds to left on this hill. Soapy just playing in the hotel as Scott does rotate in. A little later than I would have liked, but to each their own. Nice two-piece from Soapy. As St. Clair, again, now in the 100-point club. Not where you want to be in the playoff situation, especially with streaks on the line. You're sitting at 1-0. Both these teams sitting at 1-0. And Fisher College playing like a team that wants it more right now. We'll see if they start to fight for P4, and it looks like Fisher College will finally get some P4 hill time with Soapy Holden on the half wall. Not a lot of cover, but again, Fisher College could win it here as they lock down St. Clair in the palace. You see Lucasi deep in the palace, deep in St. Clair spawn as Factions tries to rotate up. Faction's going to go down as Fisher College has too easy of a control on a P4. Just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, this point is wide open from Palace, and Soapy could easily be spotted, or at least location can be called out. But they pick up a cruise missile. It's coming in hot, ladies and gentlemen, as it's 2.30 to 81. We get some precious map information. They finally clear Hill, but it's a little too late. 2.35 to 81, as there's a three-piece from Fisher College. As everyone on Fisher College is 20 kills or higher, everyone going positive. And an absolute dismay for the St. Clair College squad as it looks like this is all over. Fisher College going to take this one almost too easily in the latter half. 250 to 81. A dominant start for this series for Fisher College or Fisher Black, I should say, as there are two Fisher squads currently competing. 250 to 81 for Fisher, ladies and gentlemen. Scott was playing beautiful. The whole team was playing exceptionally well. I mean, when you see an entire squad drop 20 bombs on a hard point, everyone going positive with 15 or more non-traded kills. I mean, that's hard to compete against. St. Clair wasn't slouching by any means, but they left a lot, of, a lot on the table. That the, Their P3 rotations were off. The P4 was left wide open on the first rotation for both teams. That was just bewildering from a, a caster standpoint, ladies and gentlemen. It's leaving just a point completely open and no one even attempting to get on it, is, it seems, just is absolutely bewildering. Bewildering, confusing, and I frankly do not understand it as a caster, and I hope to never see that again. If there is a point available, you do your, your darnest to get on it. Pardon my French, ladies and gentlemen. As we get set up for an invasion, search, and destroy, I'm going to give my voice a bit of a break. We will be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you dare go anywhere. This matchup is just getting started.
ladies and gentlemen, for yet another invasion matchup, but this time it's uh, my preferred mode, that's Search and Destroy. Ladies and gentlemen, my bread, my butter, my sugar, my cream, my everything when it comes to casting is a cornerstone of the competitive Call of Duty scene, and I hope it never leaves. Bane Claire on the attack first. Scott trying to prevent them on this Bravo push, but they're able to get there. Soapy, though, has a nice flank and is able to pick up the first blood. Fisher College in trouble early as they are completely getting rotated on. GMG's got to protect their flank. As may Scott with some beautiful shots. GMG just completely unaware. So they will see one shoots just a little too early and just gets rotated on. Zarin left in a 1v3 desperation situation. Trying to hold on rebar, but it was everything or anything but secure. Everything but secure for Fisher as they take this one almost too easily. They, I mean, they swarmed on that initial uh, initial defense, and I think I think St. Clair just left the the map wide open. Lucasi here taking the high ground and just threading the needle perfectly. Rhett CW might be a little upset having the kill yoinked away from him at the get-go, or at the end of that there, but um, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. As Fisher College off to a near flawless start. Uh, Soapy going down, but is able to pick up the trade, which at the end of the day, that's all you can really ask for. At a bare minimum, at least get one. You might have to pop off and grab a, a two or three piece every round, but at least winning your initial gunfight is huge. Soapy grabbing the first blood once again, as it looks like we are having an incredible game here. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, just got distracted as Fisher College tries to bounce back. GMG able to pick up the trade as we continue here. Rare and Zarin left in a 2v3, unfortunately as we are off to the races in a 2v2. Zarin going down as Lukasi picks up one more. Rare, all alone, dropped to 14 HP and just trying to stay alive in this one. Finding a way to keep this series going for their squad. Do not want to fall too low. But unfortunately, they're going to fall too low in the search and destroy. But that's just the way it goes sometimes. Lukasi starting off three and that's a beautiful turn and burn on Rare. Might have gone down initially in that gunfight, but Rare might have, might have been a little too ego chow, chow-esque on that one. And apologies for the mix-up in that last round. I just was getting spammed with Discord notifications, but I was able to turn streamer mode on like a pro and get it sorted out. Lukasi with a 3-0 looking to add some more to that KD as St. Clair tries to bounce back on the attack, but they have been left in their spawn. They were going for that initial B push, but looked to be rotating back towards Alpha. Rare getting dropped to about 83 as Rhett and Lukasi pick up the first two kills once again for Fisher College as they continue to cook. GMG holding on the car, grabs one, could not grab Lukasi, who gets a 5-0 start and a beautiful kill from Zarin, saves the free pistol. A 1-V Two situation could not clutch up as Fisher College continues to roll. The one bright spot I could say is St. Clair prevents the cruise missile, but a 3-0 deficit in search and destroy is the last thing you want to see, especially after dropping a 250-81 in hard point. Gonna need to see something incredible from St. Clair if they want to bounce back, stay alive in this series. It just is not looking good for them. From my perspective, rare infections at uh, dropping some donuts. You gotta, you know, you know, drop the donuts and hit the gym. Grab a couple of kills. Get back in this one and focus up. St. Clair College need around here. Dropping 4-0. It's a near guarantee of taking an L, and that's the last thing. As I've said time and time again, the last thing you want is Lucasi again. Off to a phenomenal start for Fisher College as Scott grabs the headshot on the back. It's already a 4v2. Rare able to pick up one, but quickly getting chased out. Zarin and Rare combined for a two-piece of their own to keep things interesting. That is a beautiful counter play from the over-aggressive Fisher College squad. St. Clair takes advantage of the ego a bit. The ego shell at the perfect timing was tossing the nade. Rare rotating back out. Rhett puts their back to him, and now a 1v1, a pivotal 1v1. Is Sophie going to get caught out here in Rare with the ace? 
Ladies and gentlemen, an absolutely impressive bounce back round from St. Clair. They are down, but certainly not out in this fight. And Rare stepping up big time from zero to hero. Must have heard me through the ether and hit the gym something fierce and done the Saitama workout. Because that was super hero-esque performance from Rare with an ace to boot. Well done, Rare. Well done, St. Clair College. But you can't always count on that ace up your sleeve. Sometimes you just needed a little elbow grease. As St. Clair College gets back to work, they're down by two. But have the momentum. Rare got to be feeling good after the ace. But he's got to be careful and maybe not get too over-aggressive. Going for the alpha push once again. Rare might get caught out early. Brett trying to get the finish but could not. Gets rotated on instead. And here comes St. Clair. Lucasi now rotating in. GMG might be able to pick up the flank. Scott here in the broken apartments. As Factions takes down Lucasi. And this is looking like a completely different St. Clair squad. After that ace from Rare. Oh, excuse me. Dismay Scott and Soapy. Trying to find a way to... Keep their team's momentum alive, but it seems to be fading away. Rare with the headshot on the five streak needs one more for the crew. Soapy gets caught out by GMG and St. Clair. Absolutely turning the tables here in the most surprising fashion. They are getting rumped in the first three rounds, but something must have awoken within them to achieve something like this. I think it was Rare's ace that really did the trick. Yeah. to prevent the Voro. And uh, just a solid, solid job, to say the least. Rare now at knocking on the door of a cruise missile and wanting some more, going for blood. As St. Clair tries to tie this thing up, Fisher College, and what I think could be a pivotal swing round for them, does not want to tie this one. They want to take a 4-2 lead, push it to match point, and get this over. Sophie spots him in the rafters. Beautiful, beautiful awareness from Sophie. Make sure to check up top as Rhett picks up Zarin. Fisher College getting right back to business as usual. GMG trying to prevent the plant, but quickly getting rotated on. As Excuse me, it was Dismay Scott with the bomb. GMG uh, might have just been a little distracted, causing my confusion. But either way, GMG went down, and so does Rare. Fisher College bouncing back in a big way for two. A solid, solid matchup as Rhett CW with the rival nine sliding perfectly into position. Had the drop shot, got those headshots for the extra damage and drops rare. As we continue here, ladies and gentlemen, this is proving to be a most exciting search and destroy matchup. A few surprises from St. Clair, but Fisher College currently maintaining the lead. Although I'd be a little concerned if I was Fishers. I'm seeing a triple six on their side, and you're going up against the Saints. Might prove to be a bit too on the, the demonic side of things. As Zarin gets the first blood this time around. Lukasi looking for the trade. GMG grabbing another one to keep it in St. Clair's favor. Looking Fisher College now in a 2v3. Soapy holding in mid. Just trying to play this half wall and pop up at the precise time. At the right moment, as Scott rotates in, got to be careful of GMG lur lurking down that alleyway. Scott gonna rotate back in through mid. Here's him in the convenience store though. Pops the deadie and looks to make a play. Might be able to get a flank. Might be able to get a huge flank. Grabs one. Could not grab the second. GMG had the high ground, and it's a one v two. Soapy left all alone. GMG. Lurking in the corner, got spotted out. Ooh, Soapy might have been going for the execution, but wanted to play it right. Soapy with a double headshot to take Fisher to match point. Got a three-piece that time, not the ace, but still impressive from Soapy to secure a 1v2. I think GMG should have rotated to Excavator if possible. Just locked down the objective. Was playing a little too far off, and they pay the price. Fisher College looking to take the 2-0. <clears throat> Excuse me. A solid, solid matchup of Search and Destroy, but this is why I love it. It, it, it. I feel like Search and Destroy has much more recognizable and just uh, drastic ebb and flows compared to Control and Hardpoint. 
And, you know, just round for round, punch for punch, blow for blow. These teams giving us a show, ladies and gentlemen, as we get things underway for this pivotal round eight. Zarin here eating the stun. Rhett grabbing the first blood for Fisher. Zarin trying to stay alive, but shots coming from both sides. Faction's able to grab one. Rare now left all alone. Shots coming in from Rhett. CW rotating in, gets stunned out. Rare caught in the street, and just like that, Fisher College taking the 6-2-W in the search and destroy, ladies and gentlemen. And a solid job from Soapy in that pivotal clutch 1v2. Set the tone for this finish. Rhett and company just playing aggressive right out of the gate. Mounts the tank with the Renetti to take down Rare. A valiant effort, but it was Soapy and Rhett, the 9 and 8, respectively, non-traded kills. Or non-traded kills, respectively. Flip it back, reverse it. 10-4 for Soapy, 8-4 for Rhett, and a solid, solid job. But I really, props to St. Clair as well. A lot of grit and determination shown. Especially Rare with that ace coming up big. But sadly, it was not enough. A, just an incredible matchup of Search and Destroy. We are going to be running it back on Invasion. I believe Control is still glitched out. So give us just a moment to get everything set and situated. We are going to be right back. Don't you dare go anywhere. This is going to be an exciting round three in this best of five.
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Control is still a bit glitched in Codcaster, so we are on Spectator currently. Uh, I do my best with the information at hand as this St. Clair squad tries to bounce back, I believe. We are Spectator. Fisher Black, though, we will be spectating the attack side, I believe, as they are quickly securing this alpha objective. Again, St. Clair just needs to get back in this one somehow, some way. They struggled on the attack side, or on the defense side of things for a while, it seems. They dropped 6-2 in the search and destroy. That was 250-81 in the hard point as Fisher Black is just taking it to this St. Clair squad. They quickly rotate over to Bravo, and they're already taken. It's 27 to 14 in lives. Not looking good. Not looking good at all. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, Fisher is up 1-0 in this control. And again, uh, apologies for the glitches, ladies and gentlemen. We were hoping we were hoping we can get an update soon that fixes Codcaster and avoids such glitches in the future as we get things started we're going to be making sure we're on st clair Control. i believe this time around all Eliminate any as i believe we've spawned in as someone <laughs> change team to spectate <laughs> there we go we got it we got it fixed ladies and gentlemen <laughs> apologies for the confusion uh we will not be playing today sadly we will just be spectating a look at the St. Clair squad on the attack side of things and see how they fare. They are losing lives pretty quickly. They're trying to keep this close, but they're already down by four. They only have two progress bars on Bravo. Ret CW with some beautiful shots for the two piece. And it's 20, 28 to 22, excuse me. No, 21 to 28. They're getting mixed up. Everything seems to be topsy turvy and bounced around, and it is throwing me for a loop, ladies and gentlemen. 21 to 28 in lives as GMG and company try to find a way to get to Bravo. Finish that progress. Only 47 seconds left on the clock. GMG is going to rotate in and be a disruptor and spawn. But when you're down in lives, you really got to be prioritizing the objective. Not focusing the spawn trap. As you see, the lives just not going in their favor. GMG taking down Lukasi, but it's not enough. Ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, it's just not looking good for St. Clair. I think it's run out. Cruise missile coming in from Lukasi. As I believe... Oh, excuse me. I was getting confused. It is the St. Clair side that is getting spawn trapped currently. That is where I was getting mixed up. So I apologize on, on my part. As we see, just six lives remaining. And unfortunately, St. Clair going to drop it. That is unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen. Again, that spawn trap in Palace is just difficult to break out of, especially with such an efficient squad as Fisher Black. Apologies for the confusion on our end and the glitches that continue to persist. Uh, Codcaster and CDL uh, control for some reason. Luckily, we at least have the settings and the game mode right, and everything seems to be working for the players thus far. As St. Clair just tries to find a way to stay alive in this series. EMG and Factions gets the thing started off hot with a nice three-piece. So there is hope for St. Clair. They've shot this before in Search and Destroy. It's a matter if they can keep it up or not. As this is a very dangerous Fisher squad. They were too quick on the attack the first time around. The attack has slowed just a tad. But Bravo is being capped quick. GMG needs to thread some shots, find something. See a couple of players just peeking over on Bravo from Fisher, but they're going to be able to secure this, it seems, no problem. Dopey popping up, and there's a quick three-piece for Fisher. Faction's able to pick up one, but it's not looking good. 25 to 22 in lives already. Again, tipping them back in the scale, in this, tipping the scales back in favor of Fisher as they are able to rotate in onto Alpha. Rare getting in there to clear house, thankfully preventing any progress bars from being filled. 
Rare Holden now trying to protect the point with their teammates. But again, this Fisher squad is winning out the gunfights and could just win it on lives alone if they can they continue to play as well as they've been playing. Rare doing a, a phenomenal job defending this alpha objective thus far. They're keeping it close, but again, Fisher has the advantage, however slight, in lives. But again, St. Clair showing some resiliency here, showing some grit. Was about a five kill difference. They brought it down to two. Cruise missile coming in, I believe, from Fisher. See if they're able to pick up any any kills. Brett grabbing GMG as they try to rotate in. Two down for St. Clair. Zarn goes down. That's three. It's all up to factions. Factions able to take down Scott. And there you have it. 18 to 13. Just like that, back in Fisher's favor. As things start to slow down just a tad. Factions able to stay alive in a big two piece in the mid lane. Lukasi takes down Zarin. But Factions doing a phenomenal job here for this St. Clair squad. Lukasi, though, causing a bit of disruption in the gas station. So it's 14 to 10. Lives are trickling down. Players got to be careful here with their rotations and pushes. They do not want to give up this alpha point. 23 seconds left, though. All St. Clair has to do is keep him off the objective for another 15 seconds. And I think they can do that. I wish I could see rotation. There's a solid two-piece and a three-piece for Fisher. But it's all up to Rare to prevent the hold. Has to get there and cannot. Soapy taking him down as they're able to get on point. Factions get Soapy, but they are losing Alpha and they are losing it quick. With just six lives remaining, it's not looking good. Factions gets another one. Trying to rotate in. Factions got to win here. Can't do it. Scott going down, though. Zarin clearing house. Rare is there. Clock ticking down with just four lives remaining. St. Clair holding on for dear life, and they do it. Ugh. Stressful, stressful round. If I've ever seen one, somehow finding a way to stay alive with just four lives remaining. Rare and company stay alive in this series, at least for now. They're down 2-1, and they're down 2-0. So they need a win here, like you wouldn't believe. They're on the attack, which they have struggled with thus far, and especially in control. They are able to win a defensive round by the skin of their teeth. Somehow, some way, coming away with a W in round three as we go to a pivotal round four for CW with a beautiful two-piece, not the start. That's St. Clair one. <coughs> Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen, just had to grab a drink of water. Without a co-caster, I don't have any moments to breathe. And these teams aren't giving me any to begin with. As it's just non-stop action over on the Bravo Point. GMG trying to protect the flank, it looks like. But again, I wouldn't be worried so much about flanks or rotations. I'd be worried about getting on point. Soapy in mid, GMG just peppering in shots and now rotating up. Trying to find a way towards Alpha, perhaps with everyone distracted on B. It's already 29 to 21. This Fisher squad has only gone down twice, excuse me now, in this entire round so far, and it's not looking good for St. Clair. With a close to 10 kill differential and 25 seconds left on the clock. Factions trying to get in there. Red CW grabs one. Factions able to get the trade. Factions pops steady and rotates in. Should have got on point. Would have given him a few precious moments, but still. A bit of an error, possible mistake here. 13 kill differential, and I think that'll about do it, ladies and gentlemen. 26 to 11. I believe GMG left the game if I saw that properly in the feed. As there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a quick 3-1. GMG with a bit of a rage quit towards the finish. Not, not what I would expect from this St. Clair squad. As Fisher Black just unfortunately annihilated him just annihilated no two ways about it and yeah we see a couple of players of st Clair leaving early unfortunately i understand the frustration but leaving a game early is not the best look you want to stick it out to the end except defeat with honor and grace say your ggs to your fellow squad and watch the vod do what you can and 
Unfortunate there, ladies and gentlemen. That's just the way it goes. For St. Clair, unfortunately losing this one 3-0. Fisher with a dominant performance, to say the least. My name is Big Rich X, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I don't believe production needs me to say much else, but I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye.